Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video from the world of English exams. Today we are going to learn how to paraphrase. Guys, let me tell you that paraphrasing is one of the most essential and crucial skills for your IELTS writing exam. Of course, not only for writing but also for your speaking exam. So in this video, I am going to explain to you in detail what are the various ways in which you can paraphrase a given prompt and how you can generate the specific responses within no time. So if you know the techniques right, I'm sure that all of you are going to write a perfect introduction or a perfect conclusion for your essays and your uh, writing task one. So shall we get started with the video? Okay, so as you can see this uh, screen shows you the significance of paraphrasing. Why is paraphrasing so very important for our IELTS exam? As I told you, paraphrasing is one of the essential skills required for the IELTS exam. And what exactly is the meaning of paraphrasing? Phrase is a group of words. I repeat, a phrase can be defined as a group of words. So what do we do here? We initially begin by phrasing the given statement. Whatever the statement is given, we'll break it down into shorter phrases and then we'll try to change the words or to alter the words without changing the meaning. This is the essential point. The meaning should not change. The meaning should be the same. Uh, however, we can use uh, various strategies to see that the exact words from the prompt are not repeated. So we must try to change uh, the sentence as much as possible but keep the meaning the same. So that ability is called paraphrasing or rephrasing. Then of course there are different ways to paraphrase which we are going to deal. But before moving on to that let me tell you that this video stands out to be the base for our upcoming videos on uh, IELTS essay writing and I am going to start with uh, a series of videos that shows how to employ the technique of paraphrasing so this video is very important guys so uh, do check out the other videos on our channel uh, world of english exams as well okay so the first technique by which we can paraphrase is using synonyms using synonyms so what are synonyms they are words that have the same meaning of course, sometimes they are also called parallel expressions because they are different words which mean the same. So that's what is the definition of synonyms. The word is going to change but the meaning is not going to change. It's going to remain the same. Now let me tell you how this technique can be applied and uh, let me tell you that all these questions are authentic IELTS questions guys. So we don't want to learn the concept by taking general sentences. We want to be more specifically oriented to the exam. Okay. So now let's look at this example. Some people believe that lack of exercise and bad eating habits are leading to poor health. So what are some people believing? Some people are believing that lack of exercise. That means people are not exercising regularly uh, and also bad eating habits. So their dietary regime is also bad. So these are the main factors that are leading to poor health. So this is what the question says. Now directly what do we do as you can clearly see this is what you are going to do in the main exam. You are going to mark those keywords, those significant words like the nouns and the verbs and the phrases as such. So let me see how, how this sentence can be modified. So some people believe that. Now let's look at this phrase. I have changed that to some individuals feel that of course as you can see the meaning is not changed but the words are changed rather i have used synonyms for that so some individuals feel that lack of exercise so this phrase i have modified it to the lack of physical exercise yes so is the meaning changed not at all now let's proceed and so instead of writing and i have written combined with you can also write in combination with, yeah. so uh, along with or any such phrases. Bad eating habits can be synonymized to poor dietary habits. Are you able to understand how exactly we can use this technique? Very good. Are leading to poor health. 
are leading to poor health. Now, this phrase can be synonymized as are the primary causes for the deterioration of health. So, poor health is nothing but deterioration of health. So, this is what is uh, the first method of paraphrasing that is by using synonyms. So, let, let us repeat the sentence. The question is, some people believe that lack of exercise and bad eating habits are leading to poor health. Whereas the paraphrase statement is, some individuals feel that the lack of physical exercise combined with poor dietary habits are the primary causes for the deterioration of health. As you can clearly see, the meaning remains the same and the sentence, whatever we have paraphrased, is much more effective than what is given in the question actually because of the choice of words which is very important for our IELTS exam. So, this is how you can start writing the introduction. I hope I am clear. Now, let me proceed by telling you the second technique of how to paraphrase. Yes. So, as you can see, the second method in which we can paraphrase is called changing the clause order. Changing the clause order, which means a sentence may be divided into more than one clauses or, or, or let's say uh, conditions. So, that's, that's what is a clause. A clause is a part of a sentence. So, now what do we do? We directly change the order of the clauses. So, that can be done in two different ways again. The first one, by directly interchanging the clauses. So, what do we do? We identify the clauses first and then directly we interchange or flip the clauses. So, that makes an effective paraphrase. Or you can also adopt the second method that is by interchanging the clauses as well as using synonyms. So, what are we doing here? We are not only interchanging the clauses but we are also trying to use synonyms and that is called as a hybrid method of paraphrasing which we are going to look at it in detail. So, now let us understand how to employ the first method. So, this is called as the direct method. For example, adult life brings more happiness in spite of greater responsibilities. So, what is the key here? First is to identify the clauses. So, what are the two parts of the sentence here? As you can see, adult life brings more happiness. So, that is the first condition, that is the first clause. What is it? Adult life is bringing more happiness to us in spite of greater responsibilities. That means, although there are a greater number of responsibilities in adult life, this also brings more happiness to an individual. So, that is what is the understanding of the uh, given prompt. And now, let us look at the paraphrase statement. So, what have I done here? I have not changed anything, but I have just interchanged the clauses with each other. So, in spite of greater responsibilities with a comma, adult life brings more happiness directly. So, I have just interchanged the uh, clauses. So this is known as a direct method, but as you can clearly see that in this approach, we have just interchanged the phrases, but it is not advised to re uh, repeat the exact words from the question as you are not showing any, any variation uh, to the examiner, to the reader. So, what do we do? We approach the second method in which we not only interchange the clauses, but we do add synonyms to that. That makes it a hybrid method as I was telling you. Yes, so this is how you do it. Let us look at an example. Increasing the price of petrol is the best way to solve growing traffic and pollution problems. So, again, what are we doing here? Increasing the price of petrol is the best way. So, here they are using a superlative adjective that shows that there is no better way to uh, reduce the traffic problems other than increase in the price of petrol. So, it is a far more superior method. I must say the most superior method in uh, reducing the, the uh, shown problems. Okay. So, now how to paraphrase it? First step again is to identify the phrases. So, the two, the two clauses in this sentence would be growing traffic and pollution problems must be solved. And for that, what is the most effective way? the most effective way is to increase the prices of petrol. So, here once we have identified the clauses, we just interchange them and use proper synonyms. That is the method one. So, uh, look at how I have paraphrased this. The most effective method is nothing but 
the synonym for the best way to deal with issues like that means to solve solution is nothing but to deal with issues or maybe to handle issues to tackle the problems you can write anything like what growing traffic and pollution problems so traffic congestion traffic problem is nothing but traffic congestion and of course here i have retained the word pollution so it's important to know that we it's not compulsory it's not mandatory to change all the words okay so we can retain certain words like that there's no harm in that so uh, this is the second clause that has been paraphrased and let's look at the continuation from there is to increase can you see that instead of writing the word increasing i have written the word to increase so such structures are called infinitives which are again very great uh, start for the essay so uh, to increase the price of petrol so this phrase has been retained like that because it's a central idea and we cannot change that of course we can replace petrol with fu fuel and the price with cost so no harm in doing that have you understood how to change the order of clauses with synonyms so this uh, statement goes like this the question is increasing the price of petrol is the best way to solve growing traffic and pollution problems now the paraphrase statement should be the most effective method to deal with issues like traffic congestion and pollution is to increase the price of petrol so this makes a better uh, paraphrased sentence i hope the second technique is clear for you so indirectly what have we done here we have revised even technique number 1 that is use of synonyms now let's look at the third method to paraphrase yes so the third method is changing the word forms changing the word forms so as I, as you can see clearly often there are certain words in english that belong to a word family so words that are connected with each other or related to each other are said to be uh, the constituents of a word family so what are we doing here we are directly marking the keywords and we are trying to think of the various forms in which i can write the same word for instance let's say that we have the root word develop so the same word develop can be uh, written in the form of develops or maybe developed in the past form uh, and development so and undeveloped i can also write the antonym of this the opposite of this so uh, have you understood what are verb forms so word forms are nothing but the various ways in which i can write the same word by adding certain prefixes and suffixes now let's see how to uh, use this method because not not just theoretically the concept must be clear but also practically you should be able to write the introduction and paraphrase within no time guys so you should practice so very well that instantly whatever question is given you should be ready to write the paraphrase now let's look at this some people think that it is necessary to spend large sums of money on constructing new railway lines again let's phrase it some people think that so let's look at the paraphrase version some individuals believe that it is necessary to spend so here i have identified the word spend and now i think of how how are the other ways to represent the same word and here i have used the word as spending i have changed into the form of a gerund so uh, uh, those words that end in ing those words that take the ing form are known as gerunds so basically it is a verb form plus an ing as a suffix so spending huge amounts of money so rather than telling large sums of money we can write it as huge amounts of money on the construction of so instead of uh, instead of taking the word constructing i have given the noun form of it on the construction of new railway lines so now let's see what is the statement given and how have we paraphrased it some people think that it is necessary to spend large sums of money on constructing new railway lines whereas the paraphrase statement is some individuals believe that spending huge amounts of money on the construction of new railway lines is necessary so this uh, it is as simple as that just underline the proper keywords 
given in the question from and then try of various ways to represent the same word so here you don't need to uh, brainstorm for synonyms also your task is much more simplified if you adopt this technique yes so now let's move on to the fourth method in which we can paraphrase so as i was talking about gerunds are words that end in ing and let me tell you guys if you can adopt this strategy to start a sentence with a gerund there's nothing more effective than that let me tell you that this is a very strong form of a sentence now let's look at this example of how to paraphrase with a gerund today more and more tourists are visiting places where conditions are difficult such as the sahara desert or the antarctic so what are they telling tourists are opting for uh, traveling to places where the weather conditions are harsh or maybe it's very difficult to stay there such as they have given two extreme climatic conditions such as in the sahara desert or the antarctic So now let's look at the paraphrase statement. Clearly, I can see that there's already already a gerund present in the question, so I don't need to strain much to think about the gerund. I can actually start with the same uh, same word. Okay, so maybe I can also change the word if I want to exploring places like, yeah, just traveling to places like. Okay, so uh, visiting regions instead of instead of the word places, I have. Uh, written the word regions like the sahara desert and the antarctic where the weather conditions are extreme so instead of writing where the conditions are difficult i have given it as the, con the the weather conditions are extreme is gaining popularity as you can see here again i have used a gerund because it's becoming more and more popular right so that's what is given in the question that more and more tourists are visiting such places so here i have written it as is gaining popularity among tourists these days so the meaning remains the same but i have changed the uh, form of the word to a gerund and i have started writing the sentence with a gerund so that's awesome and this is the fourth way in which i can paraphrase now having said that let's look at the fifth way to paraphrase yes so the last way is to change the structure of a sentence so we can also change the structure of a sentence for example if the given prompt is in the active voice i can modify it to the passive voice or i can also adopt the reverse technique the, the vice versa that is passive voice to active voice so this is the fifth way in which i can paraphrase so now let's look at both of these if the given question prompt is in the active voice like many youngsters these days prefer shopping online so this is given in the active voice because the focus is uh, on the youngsters or the subject in the sentence now the paraphrase statement is online shopping is preferred by many youngsters nowadays so here i have tried to keep the words from the given from but if you would want you can try writing synonyms as well so online shopping shopping online has been modified has been paraphrased to online shopping is preferred by youngsters so here you can see that more emphasis is laid on the object of the sentence or the process of online shopping so and youngsters is moved to the end of the sentence so this sentence is said to be in the passive voice okay so one clue here is that many of the passive voice sentences would contain the word by so that's an indication that it is in the passive voice now let's say that the prompt given is in the passive voice like this the bank was looted by the robbers so this is clearly in the passive voice because uh, the more focus is laid on the bank and not on the robbers whereas if we change the sentence into an active voice so it's as simple as robbers looted the bank that's it So we we are not going to get into the details of it, but this is how you apply the structure here. So I hope this lesson is very clear to you in explaining what are the various kinds of paraphrasing. Let's just go back and recapitulate what we have learned. The first technique is by using synonyms. The second is by changing the order of clauses, and I have told you two methods under that. And then the third technique is changing the verb forms, and then the fourth method is paraphrasing with a gerund. and the fifth method is changing the structure of a sentence 
So why don't you practice the different kinds of paraphrasing? Just pick up any random uh, essay prompt and then try to write the sentence in all the way, all the ways that uh, I have shown here. And you know for yourself you, that you will be much more confident and ready for the exam once you learn how to paraphrase because most of the students have this uh, starting problem. So right, they, they can't begin writing. So once they start writing, then it flows. So uh, I hope this lesson helped you with that. And till I see you with the next video, don't forget to give this video a huge thumbs up and give it a like if you really want, really found this useful and do share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to World of English Exams and stay tuned to our channel for the latest updates regarding the IELTS exam. Thank you.